Hello Geeks and Gamers, Matt Lemke here with Through Gamer Goggles, Gamer-Goggles.com and today we're going to do a double trouble flip through on the Rifters 80 and 81. Be right back. Alright, anyway, so now we're back to the Rifters. And I'm going to try and do this in a fashion that I don't spoil everything. Uh, there's um, a lot of information about all the games that Palladium makes in the Rifters. And they are a source that comes out, I think, two, three times a year. I'm not totally sure on their release schedule. Uh, I think they uh, were behind on these two, so they released them really close together. Um, and as you can see from the title, it's your guide to the Megaverse. I don't know, well, maybe you can't see that, but depending on what you're watching on. Anyway... Uh, <clears throat> so leave me some comments below. Let me know if I gave you enough information to help you sink your teeth into it. Uh, one thing about the Rifters is they're, they're all fan-driven. Uh, I mean, okay, so you submit your article, your new race, your new OCC, your adventure, and then Wayne and the guys, Kevin and the guys, uh, even Chuck, um, can they, they look at them. They sometimes add extra material to your ideas. Uh, I don't know how in depth, I haven't submitted anything yet, so I don't know if they change anything. Uh, but, and then it gets published. So this is this is basically a fanzine. Uh, that's one of the unique things about it. And they, I don't know how many years they've been doing this now, but this is, their most recent one is 81. And I think they were doing four a year, so that should tell you how long they've been doing this. Um, Maybe they'll do a limited edition print run here soon of, like, the best of the Rifter hardback or something. Uh, but anyway, uh, Rifter 80. Uh, and I think every Rifter pretty much opens the same way. The few, first few pages are news. Uh, because it's fan-driven, there's not as much art as there is fiction and uh, GMing stuff. So... Uh, the first thing that is actually the most of Rifter 80, in my opinion, uh, the, the clout to it, is about a 40-page article on Wayfarers, which are effectively modern-day gypsies in... Modern-day gypsies? No, no, no. They're gypsies in the Palladium fantasy world. Uh, and uh, they're by... Uh, what's his name? Julian. Julian, I believe, was his name. I wrote it down. Julius Rose, Rosenstein. Um... And I, I think he did a pretty good job. Now, he does everything from including, like, a history, an overview, their political structure. Uh, he does... He actually spends a good bit of time on talking about caravans and how they dispute it. And the trade rule, which is uh, the primary function of the trade rule. The section on Wayfarers is, like, almost 50 pages. And he has a whole slew of Wayfarer... CCC, oh, CCCs, OCCs, um, uh, and then there's there's even a small section in retrospect to the whole section uh, on blood feuds and how the Wayfarer clan tribe caravan, how whatever you want to call it, uh, does its um, works it out politically, and this is. Probably close to half the book. It's about 50 pages, and there's a hundred and like 10 pages in the book. Then the the very next thing is House of the uh, Red Sands, which I am probably gonna butcher this a little bit because I don't know anything about splicers really. And this is a splicer supplement. Uh, there is your art for it, and basically it's. It's like a, a new section of the world, I guess, and it talks about travel and uh, noteworthy weather conditions. Is this the one that has the... Uh, no, no, that's Nebraska, Rift's Chaos. Uh, and it breaks down things, but one of the things that probably going to make a lot of people happy is there's a, the Dreadguard template um, that was created here. I don't know anything about the Dreadguard, like I said, but uh, there's a slew of host armors, which is like... Uh, all MDC, so it tells that tells me a lot about the world right there. Um, but the fact that it's uh, splicers, it has to do something with, uh, I'm guessing, demons and uh, possession and cool things of that nature and bioweapons. 
And then, like I said, I can't talk much about the uh, that section without getting into splicers. Uh, it was way over my head. Um, it was deep. And a lot of good fiction, though. The fiction was good. And then uh, the very next section is... Um, Oh yeah, Masters Unlimited, Villains and Organizations. This is actually a really great reference tool. Uh, a villainous organization and an adventure idea. So it gives you a brief intro, and it talks about how supervillains are born, and then it gives you uh, some uh, sample masters and uh, like uh, different things. Like here's a battleship, and then also, let's see, what was I going to tell you about Ah, some associated heroes with it. There's a whole bunch of OCC slash NPC type characters here for GMs to use. And then about a page of hook, line, and sinkers. Now, when I first started looking at this book, I was like, yeah, this is kind of silly. But I, I read through it, and it's actually a really good section. Uh, it's a little bit more in-depth than just creating an organization. Part 1 um, overview for Rift's Chaos Earth, Nebraska. Uh, this... This was kind of neat. I was, I haven't played Chaos Earth, but I, I did read the fiction and the fluff, and it talks about shadows over Omaha, and um, there's a good three or four pages of fiction background type of material there, and then uh, <clears throat> it goes a little bit more into detail into NEMA, which is uh, the Northern Eagle Military Alliance, and pretty much. This whole first section, because this is actually carried over into Rifter 81, um, is all basically things like uh, the land, the environment. Uh, it's setting you up with the OCC types of things, the government. Um, and one, one of the cool things that I, I thought was cool uh, is the, they talk about the weather. And one of the things they talk about is the most turbulent and unnerving new weather to blast across the states um, are storms that have been dubbed as zone twisters. Uh, and they're massive tornadoes of magical energy. <laughs> Get out of my way! Uh, and then there is the uh, Reaper Power Armor, which isn't... Okay, it's new because it's in the book, but it's not new technology-wise. Uh, it, it kind of reminds me of... As we turn the page... To, to the picture, uh, Doc Ock meets aliens, or was that aliens? Yeah, aliens with the uh, loader, uh, and e even a little bit of predator influence in the, in the different types of blades down here. Uh, it's a pretty neat little piece of power armor, and then it talks a little bit more about some the police in Nebraska, uh, demon hoppers, which I didn't read, I skipped over it, um, but. Demon Hoppers, it's, it's like the prehistory to the Zytictics. Uh, and that's what they later become known as. So, basically, they're grasshoppers. And then we move into Rifter 81. Now, there's another very big section in here. And uh, it's on gnomes. Chuck actually drew a, a really really bad to the bone picture of a gnome. Uh, I mean, it's one of the best pictures that I think I've seen of a gnome anywhere. There's a lot of personality of this guy casting magic. The two badgers guarding his back. It's pretty bad to the bone. Now, um, the title of this section is Gnomes Undersized and Underestimated. The Gnome Homesteads in Ophid's Grasslands. It's an amazing read. I have never played a gnome in Palladium. In fact, I haven't played Palladium probably since the late 80s or early 90s. Um, and I've never considered playing a gnome. In fact, most of the time I played a wolfen. Uh, but there is a ton of history here. There's background on gnome traps, allies of the gnomes, OCCs. Uh, is that new spells? I might you know. Uh, they, they've got like uh, new equipment, skiffs, uh, so they're, they've got one for land, or they're, they're basically land sales. I kind of picture them, there's, they, they didn't draw a picture, but I kind of picture them as like the uh, boards with wheels in the desert in a sail. That's what I picture them as. And then um, there's a new man at arms RCC for the gnomes, uh, and a few other things. Oh, 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 
And the next the next big thing in here is uh, optional rules for the Heroes Unlimited RPG for sleuthing. Um, I don't know if you can see any of that. And what's cool about this is they're almost a plug-and-play set of rules where they give you all these different mechanics for an evidence system, how to plant your evidence, how to use your evidence, uh, interrogation conflicts. It's, it goes through, I think, eight steps. Let me double-check that real quick. Uh, seven steps of the interrogation process and how things work. And then uh, they have an alternate character creation set of rules, um, right down to modifying some of the skills to sh explain what they might mean in a more Sherlock Holmesy style of game. Uh, and then the next big, big thing is, oh, this is actually stellar. This is out of this world. It doesn't matter what game you play. Uh, there is a... Oh, they also have equipment for Super Sleuthing, but... Um, Greg Dysick, if I got your last name wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, he did, well, there's no picture. He did this section on navigating game power and levels. And he talks a lot about the variance in, uh, especially like a game like Rifts, where you might have PCs that are not balanced um, and they have different kinds of power creep going on. This is a really good section. It's about, I think, 10 pages. Um, and then there's a full adventure that was written by Kevin and Julius Rosenstein for Palladium. Uh, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it. Uh, the, the title is Blood Moon, and I'm just going to tell you the beginning. Uh, and the beginning is the people of the East River Labor Camp are missing. All of them. And it's your job to go find out what happened. So says you, taking the, um, look, look, it's a goblin thief. Uh, so says you, taking on the reins of the adventure. And then the next big thing is, okay, so the, the book closes out pretty much with the uh, final chapter of, or final portion of Rift's Chaos Earth. And where it does it start? Part two of Nebraska. And this, this section, in my opinion, is a little bit meatier than in the first Shrifter. Uh, it gives you new, new OCCs, a DB, and uh, some villains. So one of the OCCs that I thought was kind of neat is um, one that's called a Lost Skeleton. And we can take a look at that. Um, so they're citizens of the militia, basically. Um, pretty much any alignment. They're standard... They're basically standard citizens, so they're, they're humanoids, right? And uh, they, they basically get four skills. Um, equipment is OCC-related militia. Um, militia Prepper, uh, it's an MOS skill package, and it gives you combat engineer, communication specialist, so they're, they're working on the idea of the skill packages for you. And then uh, there's, you know, secondary skills work the way... They normally work, um, but I wanted to get into the standard equipment just to give you an idea of what a militia, uh, a, a lost skeleton, uh, would have. Yeah, that's my phone. I'm ignoring it. Um, so armor, thirty percent have commercial SDC armor um, or light or light MDC armor. So they're not. I mean, they're they're kind of like the guys that run around the wilderness and. Um, aren't heavily armored or funded, um, and they're struggling. So this would be quite possibly a low-powered campaign. You wouldn't want these guys to face a lot of demons unless you wanted to kill them. Um, and then it talks about the uh, Low-Run low River people, and they're not from around here. They, they've been dimensionally transplanted. Uh, and then and the, the Nebraska National Guard, believe it or not. And then there's a survivalist prepper OCC. Uh, not sure that this guy needed to be made. Made He's similar to a wilderness scout um, with a couple of different, little different twists on it. Uh, it does use the plug-and-play skill set system. So there's, 
you know, you got your different type of survivalist, so it does kind of give you more of a uh, Mad Max-esque kind of feel, I think. And then the book actually closes out with different types of adventure hooks, hook, line, and sinkers. So, what do I think of the Rifters? Well, I think one, one of the coolest things about a Rifter in general is the fact that they're written by people like you and me, fans. Uh, you can, in fact, I think it's in the back. It, it's in every book. It tells you, why don't you write for a Rifter? So if you pick up a Rifter, you can get everything you need to know to do it. Uh, the submission guidelines and things of that nature. I would say that they need more art. Um, I mean, the art is good. Uh, it's great that, uh, let's see, this one is 112 pages and this one is 112 pages. So they're pretty consistent on the size. And uh, But uh, I think a lot of the material, at least from the two I've seen, these are the only two I've ever owned, uh, is pretty good. Uh, it depends on what you want. It's people sharing and, uh, you know, creating, creating things that other people could use that wouldn't normally be put into print. Uh, and that makes it good. Now, sometimes there's things like the GM advice. That makes this book extremely valuable. That is a very good article. Uh, I wish that I had written it for my blog. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Hi, guys. Meet the Nibbles, who's gonna go down. <laughs> she just did, decided not to go down my back, so we'll do this for her so she's comfy. Uh, thanks for watching my video, and I appreciate it. Uh, please, please hit the like button uh, and, and share it if you, you know, know somebody who might be interested. And of course, there's always Twitter and the Facebook thingy, and soon I have a newsletter coming. That'll be down there or in a link below, and my kitty cat loves that idea. Uh, so, anyway, uh, there was one more thing. There was one more thing. Oh, yeah. Subscribe. Be a part of my community, our community. Let's make it grow together. See you guys at a con somewhere or a local store or if I'm driving through the country, maybe a game club. I don't know. You're not going to go knock down my camera. Bye, guys.